Hey everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Today is Friday, May 26th. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Four-day weekend, at least for me. So, uh, really excited to have four days off. And I thought I'd make a video before I run off and start doing Memorial Day weekend stuff. Which usually just means visiting my mom and having lunch and just trying to relax. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a good weekend. I'm assuming my East Coast friends are already out and about and doing a lot of fun stuff. So uh, what's going on this weekend or what's going on this week in sports? NBA, Miami Heat are up three games to two. Celtics have won the last two games. Game six tomorrow night. Uh, my Lakers have been eliminated by the Nuggets. Congrats to the Nuggets on a four-game sweep. Uh, the better team definitely won. Uh, NHL, Dallas Stars are hanging by a thread as well. They're, they're down three games to one. They pulled out game four last night. I'm rooting for a comeback for the Stars. I, I, I just can't root for, <laughs> I can't root for Vegas. Uh, and then uh, congrats to the Florida Panthers, eighth seed team. Uh, they've already, they're going to be in the Stanley Cup final starting next week. Uh, baseball, what happened this week in baseball that I noticed? Dodgers took two or three from the Braves. I'm always surprised. Uh, the Dodgers keep losing pitchers. We're literally down to Clayton Kershaw, Noah Syndergaard, Tony Gonsolin, and a couple of minor leaguers. And somehow they took two or three from the Braves. They're playing the Tampa Rays this weekend, so let's see what happens there. Tampa's off to a good start, and I think they annihilated the Blue Jays the other day. I could be wrong. I haven't been paying as much attention to baseball because, I'll be honest, I'm not much of an NBA guy. You guys know I'm a hockey guy, but... I have been watching a lot of basketball. I have been watching a lot of NHL. So uh, looking forward to eventually uh, finishing uh, finishing with the NBA, the NHL. And next week we finish up on Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Love that show. Um, sad to see it end. But it looks like uh, season three might be it for it. The final episode is on Tuesday. Uh, Let's see what happens there, but great show. Uh, I'm not much of a soccer fan, but uh, watching Ted Lasso has actually made me interested in soccer. Hobby-wise, I don't know what I've got going yet this weekend, just because, and this has probably happened to some of you, I am watching a very big card right now for me. Um, it's a card that doesn't come around too often, and I won't say it out loud just because in case someone out there watch, is watching wants that card too. It ends on eBay tomorrow, and I'm willing to pay good money for it without trying to break the bank too much. So because of that, it's kind of stifled me uh, going to a card show, going to an LCS, or even buying little things on eBay. But that does bring me up to a question with you guys. Uh, last week, I went to the Burbank card store. I hadn't been there in a while. And there's a lot of YouTubers, and I'll raise my hand. I'm there with you guys who will say, oh, there's nothing better than buying a card at a card show or even at your LCS. You know, you don't pay tax. You get the card right away. You get to look at the card. I totally agree with that. But then there's the other analogy, and this happened to me at the Burbank card store, was there were some nice cards. There was a few I wanted to buy. One of them was a 1967 Topps. Uh, it was some type of batting or home run leaders featured Richie Allen, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron. And I thought about buying it and, and I looked at the VCP and, you know, the VCP was on. But then I went on eBay and looked, looked at the previous sales and I noticed just recently the card had sold for $8 to $10 cheaper. And all of a sudden I kind of go, you know what, I go, I'm, I'm not going to buy any cards. Uh, there wasn't anything that really like stood out where I go, I have to have this card. So I decided, you know what, I know that I knew that I was watching some some eBay stuff that was actually going to end that night. So um, I ended up picking up some cards, which I actually am going to show you today. Um, but I ended up, th I bought three cards on Sunday. Two of them have already arrived and I'll show you those in a moment. But two of the, all three of the cards I bought for way under VCP. And when you're saying what's way under Rick, uh, 30 50% below VCP. And it always brings up the question, yeah, it's a great idea to buy a, a card at a card show, at a card store. I do not disagree. But at the same time, 
eBay or whatever site you're on, if you can find a card for a discount, you can't, in my opinion, you can't turn that down. There's some good deals that be had online. So sometimes I, I have to admit, I do turn away from the, let me buy the card at a card show. Let me buy it at a store because I want to support the store. Um, trust me, Burbank card store doesn't mean my support. They've got plenty of support from other people. Um, there's the little mom pa store down the street that sells baseball cards. It's selling the card $50 over VCP to deserve my support sometimes, but not when it comes to something like that. So uh, just, that just brings the question to you. Do you exclusively buy on eBay or do you exclusively buy at card shows? Um, or at your local card store. Now, granted, I, I do get it. If you're at the National, if you're at the Burbank Card Show, one of the bigger shows, Chantilly, uh, if you're there, yeah, damn it, let's buy some cards. Absolutely. I'm in total agreement with that. But when you're at the little regional store that's every Saturday and every, that's we have several shows here every Saturday and, and sometimes every Sunday. And they're just these little mom pa type shows and, uh, the guys are asking for a lot of money. So I tend to skip through those. You find a deal here and there, but sometimes I go, you know what? I'm going to go on eBay and just get some deals there. So wanted to throw out that your way and see what you think. So what am I going to show you today? Um, some low, some pick, let me look back here. I'm going to show you some pickups. I finished one of my Dodger team sets. So I want to show that off to you. It's a very small set. Um, I'm also going to talk to you about league leaders cards. Uh, and I have a funny story, and I think I'll relay it when I start showing you the cards. And I'm also going to show you, yeah, so my recent pickups, a Dodger team set, and some league leaders cards. So let me uh, turn the camera around, and we'll start showing you stuff. All right, so first on the list is my 1931 W517 Dodger team set. Uh, it's only three cards. Uh, I wanted to show them all to you because you're going to notice... These are strip cards, and they're all different sizes compared to how the cards were cut. Now, the first card I received was the Dazzy Vance card. And there you see it in all its glory. I learned later that this picture is several years old that was used on this card. But that's Dazzy Vance, and it looks like they cut him. It looks like they cut the borders off on this one, and you'll see it by the next card I show you. So that's Dazzy Vance. Now the next one I picked up, and you saw this on a video probably a few weeks ago, this is the Lefty O'Doul. Now this one was looks like it was cut uh, right, where you still see the borders on the off around each edge. Um, it's it's um, the card's been marked, and uh, but here's the Lefty O'Doul card. All these cards have blank backs. This card, by the way, there's a variation. Uh, Lefty O'Doul, this is a version of him on Brooklyn. There's also a version of him, I believe, on the Phillies, where it says Philadelphia. And one of the things I don't like about collecting Dodger cards is if you look for the the, the variation with the Phillies card, it's, it's a good cheap price. But when it's a Dodger card, for some reason, it's a lot more expensive. And I have to admit that gets a little annoying sometimes. And now you're going to see a big size difference in the last card that I just bought. And um, this one finishes the set. This is George Kelly. And you could tell they completely cut off the borders here. Uh, here, I'll, let me bring Left Deal Duel back in for some perspective. So George Kelly was completely cut. Just it, it's down to just the foot. I mean, just part of the photograph. And there's a side of me that goes, "Why did I buy this card?" But at the same time, this card, similar to the O'Doul card, has a variation. Yeah, his photos on the Giants, but he but he has a card that says Cincinnati. Then he has a variation down here of Brooklyn. I have seen very few Brooklyn cards pop up, but when they do, somebody wants. 250 $200, $300. I'm not that enamored with this set. I'm not that enamored with this card. Unfortunately, I am enamored with finishing my team sets because I do 
like saying what what set I have complete. So I found this card for roughly sixty bucks, and I go, let's just here's a case of me just getting it out of the way. Um, sometimes I do that when uh, I'm working on a set. And some of you might say, why do you buy, bother buying the card? And I totally agree with you. It's just, I want all the cards in this set. Um, so that is George Kelly. Uh, some of my recent pickups, these have all come in in the last few weeks. Uh, these are all from the same set again. I am. It looks like I'm making a run on the 1961 Topps All-Star cards. Um I picked up a few. I'm still waiting for one one more in the mail, but I picked up Warren Spawn. No hat, no cap. I, I like the ones with the cap, but uh I found this at a good price and I go, I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna pass it up. So I took it, and that's Warren Spawn. And then a couple of eBay pickups, and I picked these up at wonderful prices. Uh the first one being Bob Friend. My Pittsburgh friends are going to be excited for the next couple of cards. Um, so here's Bob Friend, 1961. Had a great year in 1960. Had some good years with the Pirates. Doesn't get as much recognition as as you would think. He had some good he had some good years with the Pirates. And here's his back. Love 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 this set. This subset. I'm not going to work on the 1961 set, but I am going to finish off, hopefully someday, this subset of All-Stars. And then the last one that I just picked up um, is Bill Mazeroski. Maz is an interesting player. I've got three or four Maz cards in my collection, and every time I try to find a Mazeroski card, he seems to be the most expensive card, or one of the more expensive cards around. Um, I have 11 of the 22 1961 All-Stars. Obviously, Mickey Mantle's the most expensive. I think Maze was the second most expensive that I that I paid for. Mazeroski's been the third. So, uh, luckily, again, I got this at a great deal. So, I couldn't pass it up. I think I won this from Greg Morris Cards. And uh, picked this up in a seven. So, that's Bill Mazeroski. And then my last group comes from... And this kind of reminds me of childhood stories... And so, some of you might be able to relate to this. When we were kids and we had our cards, there was always one kid. It always seemed like it was one kid. There might have been several, and they were older. They kind of knew how to take advantage of you when it came to trading. And I won't name names just because I have no idea if this person happens to be watching. Uh, and This is a friend of a friend, to be perfectly honest with you. But he had a tendency of taking advantage when it came to trading. One of the things that he would like to point out was he would trade you a league leader's card. So I'm going to bring out a random card, a league leader's card. And he would say, this is a special card because look, there's Roberto Clemente and there's Willie Mays. So he would turn around and trade one of these cards for, I'm going to make up names here just because I don't remember who they were, but he would trade you like something like this for like a, a 1963 Top Sandy Koufax. He, he would do something along those lines. But it's funny, looking back on it now, when I now when I look at league leader cards, and I was talking to the owner of South Bay Sports Cards a couple of years ago about this, is that these league leader cards, they feature Hall of Fame, they feature quite a bit of Hall of Famers, and you can get them at a good price. So it made me take out a a handful of my uh, League Leaders cards that I wanted to share with you. Like I said, look at this card. This one's got Maze and Clemente, along with Dick Grote. Okay, uh, Norm Larker is probably the one guy you kind of go, who's that? Even as a Dodger fan, uh, they don't talk much about Larker. But you've got two great players, two Hall of Famers, one MVP player also. But this is a nice League Leader card. So... I, I really like looking at these league leader cards just because um, of who's on there. Now, this card, I did not know I even, or I guess I should pay attention to who, who's on, what cards I have. I bought this card because Tommy Davis won the batting title. Somebody was showing a video this week. It might have been 
mid midlife crisis. I could be wrong. And he happened to show this card at a uh, card show. And I go, do I have that card? And I go, I must, because Tommy Davis is on it. Little did I realize Frank Robinson's on it. Stan the Man Musial's on it. Hank Aaron's on it. A uh, future, I want to say, American League Commissioner Bill White was on it. And, of course, Tommy Davis, two-time batting champ. But you get a lot of great players on these cards. Yeah, the hanging heads are kind of ugly. I get it. Um, some of you guys like those, though. Um, but there are some really nice car players on these cards. So maybe look at some of my 60s ones. And um, I found this one. I mean, this one has three Hall of Famers. Bill White won a couple of gold gloves. Tommy Davis won a couple of batting titles and uh, was a designated hitter later in his career. And then I bought this one also, this Tommy Davis card. One, I bought it because I wanted to, I didn't put Tommy Davis on my Dodger display wall, but I did want a Tommy Davis card to show it off. He won two batting titles. And I thought this would be a great card to show off just because, look at that, Tommy Davis... Roberto Clemente, Dick Grote, Henry Aaron. I would say this is one of my favorite league leading cards, but take a look at your league leader cards, especially from the 60s, even the 70s. Um, there's just a lot of great players on these cards, and you can have a lot of great players on one card for a cheap price. So as, my, as the guy that used to take advantage of us when it came to baseball trade said, these are special cards. He's right. This one I've shown you before. This one has four Hall of Famers. Koufax, Marischal, Bob Gibson, Gaylord Perry. Um, good look. I mean, four Hall of Famers. This is one of Koufax's last cards. He had retired by this point. This was the 1967, the 1967 top, from the 1967 tops. And then not to exclude the batters, this one was this one's always been my favorite card. I bought it in the last couple of years. Not in the last couple of years. I bought it like in the last six months. I love this card. Clemente, Aaron, and Mays on one card. And I guess everyone else loves this card because this was not an easy card to find. Um, yeah, they're out there. I should say an easy card to find at a good price. I eventually, uh, I did settle for a three. Uh, just because it was so expensive, but I absolutely love this card. Love these players. They were they were the legends when I was first watching baseball. These were like the kings of baseball. Um, I was fortunate enough to see them play. So I uh, love this card from 1966. This is the 1965 batting leaders featuring Bob Clemente, Hank Aaron, and Willie Mays. And my last card. I've shown this one off to you before. So the pitching. Uh, the pitcher one I showed had four Hall of Famers. Holy smokes, we got five here. Look at that. Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, Willie Mays, who won the home run title in 1962, Ernie Banks, Orlando Cepeda, five members of the Hall of Fame, four members of the 500 Home Run Club. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. The, these, the guys that are on this card... I got this at a good price. Um, I did chose to go the frugal way and, and only settle for a three. Um, but I remember when I bought this about a year ago, I think, less than a year ago. Um, you could have had a five at a decent price. But uh, it's a good looking card. I say that about, I say that about all my good looking cards. But um, those are my league leader cards along with some of my pickups. And as I always say, if you stuck around, thanks so much for hanging out. Have a wonderful weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and we'll catch you on the next video.